morning all. First, I'd like to thank you for your attendance to today's symposium presentations. My name is Noelia Velasquez, and I'm under the mentorship of Dr. Pamela Bettis, faculty in the Department of Teaching and Learning. And the title of my proposal is The Effects of Socioeconomic Status, or SES, and Family Structure on Parental Advice Towards Post-Secondary Education. First, to give you all the scope of how I came about my research interests and project, I'll give you some background on my family and educational upbringing. I'm the oldest of five siblings to working class parents. Um, they're migrant workers for the most part and um, can, not be, can be characterized as working class, like I mentioned before. I grew up um, with an educational attainment on their behalf of a high school education in Mexico on my father's behalf and on my mother's behalf um, she had an elementary school education in Mexico as well. So growing up, I was really encouraged to pursue higher education, and it was actually an expectation in my family that I'd be pursuing um, post-secondary education. I had the opportunity to be um, fortunate enough you know, to have resources, resources such as attending different camps every summer, and there was always something educational that was pushed on, on myself and my siblings on my parents' behalf. So growing up, I assumed and thought of myself just like a, another child of another middle class family and that everybody had the resources that I had available to, to me. The sad reality though, um, while interacting with colleagues and other peers has been that, and definitely doing th um, my research, has been that socioeconomic status definitely affects the way that people are um, have resources and how they're brought up. Also. Um, through the U.S. Census Bureau, I was able to get information, such as this, um, of demographics of Latinos and different ethnicities, um, and numbers broken down into different ethnicities, and we can see that Latinos are the largest minority group, therefore meaning that, we're, that this is a population that's um, rapidly increasing. Also, through the Office of Superintendent Pub um, of Public Instruction, we can see that Latinos comprise of 18% of students. And this may not seem like a lot when you just look at the number, but looking at statistics and seeing that Latinos are the largest growing minority group, we can see that we will have more, stu more Latino students and therefore need to um, pay special attention to this, to discrepancies in um, facts such as these that indicate um, students elementary school entrance and then lead, go to um, high school graduation rates and then so on through academia. And so in comparison, Latinos in comparison to other ethnic groups can be seen that have half, about half the success rate of college, um, high school graduation, which should be concerned to all of us because this is uh, the growing minority and does not have, uh, the rates of educational attainment do not match up. So to give you some background um, on this study and literature review, I've taken the fields of human development and critical studies in order to analyze literature and to approach this project. Primarily, I'll be looking into the SES on behalf of critical studies um, of Latinos, yet again because um, the importance of the discrepancies uh, for them pursuing higher education. And in the human development, I will look at the structure, um, such as family cohesion, flexibility, and communication, that also play an important role in this um, educational route for students. So first, I will take um, give you some definitions that will be used throughout the presentation in order for us to be on the same level and understand um, more of this project. Socioeconomic status, or uh, later I've been referring to it as SCS, um, is defined as the economic and, economic and social, sociological combined total measure of a person's work experience and, or of an individual or um, a family's economic and social position in relationship to others, education, occupation, and, uh, and income. Family dimensions are then defined um, in cohesion. This is the family's and emo 
emotional bond, so all of the members um, bond with feeling of belonging to a group. For family flexibility, we have the amount of change in a, that a family is willing to um, change in relationship to their situation in roles and rules. For family communication, this will be defined as degrees that smooths friction between partners and family members. So for my literature review, through human development, I have um, been able to learn that there are there is a spectrum of family cohesion and flexibility for each, and that there are four main levels in both of these. Also, I've been able to see how communication is measured and the different mannerisms used in um, groups. So for example, in this case, we'll be talking about how families interact with one another. In, for social class and education, I have heavily based my literature review on Annette LaRose's work, and I've taken both her books, Home Advantage and Unequal Childhoods, um, to give me a precedence of how I will um, approach my own research and my own findings. So Home Advantage, both are ethnographies that, um, where Annette LaRoe goes into schools and uh, talks to families and the educational system where the families um, have their students um, and they're being educated. So for Home Advantage, LaRoe takes two schools, Prescott and Colton. Prescott is considered the higher SES school and Colton is the lower SES school. And these are both predominantly white schools and the, she measures the interaction of parents with their children and then parents with, within, the family, within the educational system. And how socioeconomic status um, differ is a big impact because of the different interaction levels are, are different based on these um, this SES. Unequal Childhoods is then a compilation of stories um, differentiated by variables of class and race, and this is then um, an examination of how of child rearing in, based on different class and race. So here are the the continuums for both cohesion and uh, flexibility, referred here to as adaptability, and a family. And so you can um, in the continuum of co uh, family cohesiveness you have an, either an extreme of disengaged or an enmeshed family. And so as you go along through the continuum, a dis you will find that a disengaged family is a group of individuals living together in the same roof, but really do not, do not have that emotional connection and are not very um, interdependent. Moving along through the continuum, you will find connected families as well. And these are families <coughs> that are more in tune with each other in regards to their emotional support for each other, but still value individuality and are not um, as, as dependent on each other. In an enmeshed family, the other extreme, you will find individuals in a family that are too interconnected, and this can sometimes be um, detrimental to them because they do not value individuality. And so if you have a family that is used to doing something, for example, going to a certain school, um, so attending a university such as WSU, and this has been a trend through grandparents, parents, and siblings, and then there's a child that chooses not to go there, then they'll be cast out, and that's when there are problems um, in the family. For the continuum of family flexibility, the, this is the the differentiation of how families adapt to rules and roles that they have established. In a rigid family, you will find families that are not able to change their rules or roles in accordance to the situation. And so, for example, if you have a family whose father is used to being the breadwinner and the mother a homemaker, and they go through a situation where the father is unfortunately laid off and the mother then has to provide, and they, they fall, happen to fall under the rigid family um, dimension, then it will be very hard for them to, to adjust and to change their rules. So for example, the mother then having to go to work and the father having to stay at home if that were the case. Continue on at, to a more balanced relationship. This is where families are more flexible and they're able to, to change rules and roles <coughs> accordingly to 
to their situation. And so this will be like aforementioned with the family that um, whose father is a breadwinner and the mother a homemaker. They'll be able to change roles um, better and have less trouble in their relationships as a family in order to succeed in their current situation. On the other extreme of flexibility, we have families where rules and roles are not clearly established and there everybody goes about doing their own thing pretty much and um, there might be rules or roles but these are still not followed through and everybody is able to change them um, in accordance to their own personal benefit. So now to move on to the literature view on home advantage and unequal childhoods. Um, I have been able to see also through the human development um, field different interactions of, soci of social class and just different um, family organization, family communication and such. And so now I'll give you a, an overview of how these work together. So for social class and family organization, I have found that more structured families have more structured, uh, that higher CS families have more structured roles. And this, um, through LaRoe's work, has been shown that it's due to the fact that higher SES families do not have to worry about their income, and so they're able to uh, pay more attention to being able to, be, to move from one role to another with more ease than a lower SES family, because a lower SES family is primarily concerned with their income and, have, and making ends meet, usually. And so this is how it was described in her book, Home Advantage. Also, um, I found that in family organization and social class, higher SES families have more shared roles. And so um, LaRoe discusses that lower SES families have mothers taking care of, the student, of their children's education. And in higher SES families, this is also the case. But the differentiation between social class and how parents approach their children's education is that in higher SES families, fathers also try to add more of their support to the mother in supporting their child's education. And so this is not to say, through Leroux's work, that um, lower SES fathers would not like to take um, a part in their children's education, but it through Leroux's study, it's been seen that they can't because they have to tend to their work in order to support the family. In regards to social class and family communications, communication patterns, I've seen that working class and upper middle class families have different types of communication. Leroux is able to describe working class families as having a more wide patterned um, communication system. And so the patterns are um, illustrated for you here. And a more wide patterned um, interaction in families would be where two individuals really do not talk to each other, but they will interact with the, with the third party. And so the third party will be the one um, mediating information from those two that do not interact. And so Loro is able to discuss that in Colton schools, um, this was definitely the case um, because fa fathers, for example, had to be at work where the mother was taking care of um, the children and also dealt with the school. So in, in higher SES families, um, Loro has found there to be a more circular communication and so I was able to identify the different types of communication through the human development field in her study. And so more circular communication would be the all channel or star um, communication pattern. And this is where all individuals all um, interact with one another. And so this happens to be the case yet again in, um, in higher SES families. And so because Leroux discusses that um, these families are more um, trained to be more inquisitive and talk to each other and question each other, where lower SES families would be more just willing to take um, advice and other people's opinions based on their insecurity of not being as educated as them. And 
so this happens to be the case then when there's family communication in schools. Lower SES families um, were found to be more timid than higher SES families. Lower SES families um, did not feel the, the confidence to go into a school and to challenge, in a way, an educator's perspective because this is, they, they saw them as professionals and higher SES families in comparison were the other way around where they were more willing to go in and be, play an active role because they had though that um, background where they were raised to be more inquisitive and to and they have that um, educational training to go in and, and ask more about um, their child's education. And so SES, as you can see, plays a huge role on how these parents are brought up and then interact with, the fam with their children's educators. So for social class and family expectations for education, yet again, there were differences in those parents from different SESs. And so um, working class parents were more content with their children finishing high school in Leroux study because they, were, uh, they themselves had only finished either high school or were high school dropouts in the Fulton School, which was a lower SES school. In comparison, in the Prescott School, this is where it was higher SES, and the parents, at least one of the parents in the study, had received a, a college education. And so then there was an expectation of children to go on and pursue and at least attain that same educational level, if not higher. For social class and child rearing patterns, I was able to see that there was differentiation, um, again, in different SESs. And in working class families, the mothers in Home Advantage felt that their role in their children's education was to get them ready for school in regards to making them breakfast, in regards to having them clean and, and taken and just attending school, and their job stopped on the other side of the door because of that insecurity that they were not prepared enough to take part into, in their child's education, so supplementing um, education that children did not have at their school. The differentiation between higher SES families was that they also got them ready for school and they felt that they needed to be prepared in just materialistic ways, but, all, but the difference here was that they were able to go in and um, feel like they had that partnership with the schools instead of just kind of leaving them at the door and leaving them to their educators' um, discretion of how their, their education should be conducted. And so then these parents were um, able to have more supplementation for, for their child's education and to take that initiative. This then leads me to the purpose and guiding questions of my proposal. Um, the purpose is to find a correlation between socioeconomic status and family dimensions um, in, an, in the context of elementary education. And so this is heavily um, persuaded by LaRose work because she did her work in elementary school education in predominantly um, white schools and I'd like to find this out um, due to previous statistics that I showed you um, how this plays a role in Latino families. And so through um, the literature, I've already found that there are some differentiations just in class. And so I'd like to see um, how in this specific um, ethnic group, these, these um, take a role in, in preparing children for their education in regards to when it comes to their family. And so then my leading question is, what kind of advice have students been given for their, from their parents based on their designation of SES and family dimensions? So future methodology will be um, a qualitative study, and this will be an interview-based um, project with, with questions structured enough to find out a parent, uh, the family's SDS and, the, and where they fall on family dimensions. But then it will be open-ended to see their, their perspectives on what they had, have advised their children, which is initial, initially what I'm looking for. And, um, looking for. and then, Theoretical framework will be gathered from human development and, and then um, social capital will also be used. So this participant pool for this um, proposed study will
will be Latino parents in the Columbia Basin in the Yakima Valley area. In the Columbia Basin, um, this is home to me, and so therefore I feel like through a snowball effect, I'll be able to get into schools um, and present my research and therefore get a population of similar SES um, backgrounds. And this is um, a, in an area that's highly dependent on agricultural work, so I feel like I'll be getting um, the same the same SES, and therefore I would need Yakima Valley um, participants to uh, offset my the, the same findings. And so hopefully I'll find um, different socioeconomic statuses in the Yakima Valley. So anticipated fi um, findings based on my literature review are that there will be more an understanding from teachers as to why um, students' thoughts are the way they are. So when it comes to the information that has been given by their parents, and hopefully also more encouragement on educators' behalf, because then they know more of the student's background instead of just generalizing um, information that and having assumptions about these students. Another anticipated finding is why there are some Latinos pursuing higher, edu higher education in comparison to those um, that are not. Possible implications of this study based on my review are that there will be uh, a, there will, it will help add significance to programs such as these following programs. So Overbound, Gear Up, Talent Search, Camp, and even um, the McNair Scholars Achievement Program. And so we'll, hopefully this will, these findings will help support why these resources are necessary and useful for these students when they are getting the information that they are from their parents. And they, yet again, it's based on their SES and family structures. And so these programs, as I've seen and have been able to participate in, um, are, are able to bridge the gap that parents um, lag in, unfortunately, due to their background. And so another possible implication would be the reassur reassurance of which, which mediums of cohesion and flexibility are more, most successful in families. And so these are selected references from my um, literature review. And at this moment, I would like to thank my mentor for guiding me through this process and teaching me the ways of a scholar and hopefully um, leading on to more success. Um, I'd also like to thank my camp cohort and, and peers, and especially Dr.